As the country continues to celebrate Pride Month, we can't deny that there's still a lot more to be done in highlighting and educating society about the LGBTQIA plus society. So our big feature this morning, uh, They Called Me Queer, is a read containing poems, stories and essays uh, compiled by Africans who self-identify as lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer, intersex and asexual. Curated by Kim Vinfogel and uh, Kelly Eve Quipman. Uh, the read continues to outline a spectrum of queer narratives which include race, class, gender, sexual identities, coming out and a heteropatriarchy amongst others. Well, who uh, Kim is here to uh, this morning joining us to talk about uh, uh, the book that uh, she co-compiled. Kim, it's great to have you here on the show. Thank, Thank you, you so much for coming. <laughs> I'm happy to be here. Let's talk about the idea to have this compilation of stories, of poems um, yeah. that really do reflect the the lives of the LGBTQ plus community. Okay, so I was one of the, I think you can call it late bloomers. Mm -hmm. I, uh, when I realized I was queer, I, was, I went online, I went looking for, for, for places that I could see myself reflected. I, I didn't know who to turn to, I didn't know that I could speak to my friends because mm. I didn't feel like they were going through the same things as I was at the time. Um, so obviously I did what any millennial would do or someone who is seen as a millennial. I went online. Yeah. And I started looking for stories where I can see myself as a so-called colored, you know, black person living in South Africa, being queer or questioning my sexual identity and mm. my gender identity. Like, where could I find resources to mm. see myself and not feel so alone? Um, and I think there's a lot of people who agree with me that when you do go online and you do do your own research, you don't really see that. A lot of the queer narrative in South Africa is whitewashed. And I think that is... Um, just something that society uh, 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 that happens in society a lot because that's where the power structure lies, mm. right? Um, so I was like, you know, if I can't see myself, then you need to create that space. Yeah. So I started blogging, I started writing about my own identity, and then a couple of years later, I was like, why not compile a book? Yes. Because I met a friend of mine in New York who was compiling a book called "She Called Me a Woman," mm. uh, Nigeria's queer women speak. And after that, I was so propelled to think, you know, I can do this. I yes. can create a book where people can see themselves reflected that is not too academic, that is not too um, elitist, mm -hmm. where people cannot understand the language. Um, and that's how They Called Me Queer happened. And yeah. so you went online and you couldn't find these stories <laughs> where you could see yourself. So yes. how and where did these stories come about? Did these poems come through? Um, so we called out to people, the queer community, and we said, look, we're going to start this book, they called me queer, and we want it to be a book that is not once off, but that will have, what do you call it? A sequels. series. Yeah, yeah, a series <laughs> of them. <laughs> so I, called, I first called on Eve Quirkman, and I said, hey, do you want to assist me? Let's work together. Um, let's find queer people of color, black South Africans who identify with the LGBTQIA community, and let's compile a book so that when the other baby queers come, <laughs> when the people after us come, they have a, a space to go and to understand and see themselves. Mm. Um, and that's how we put out the call to people and asked, would you like to write for the first book? Um, would you like your story out there? And that is how we got 32 amazingly written uh, essays mm. and poems and ways of expressing themselves. Yeah. When we look at um, South Africa and beyond its borders, um, South Africa um, is sort of perceived to be one of those countries that are, are open and really have been doing a lot in terms of advancing the mm. rights of uh, the LGBTQ plus community. Um, is that a true reflection or is that a sort of a false perception that we have of ourselves, especially in light of how um, the community continues to um, be, you know, treated and abused mm, and mm. Um, not accepted? I mean, in South Africa, we're going into the 14th year of it being legal to be who you, who you want to be, um, whether that's lesbian, gay, bi, trans, intersex, and asexual. Um, but I think that there's a lot that needs to be done. South Africa strives to do so much when it comes to our politics and how we align ourselves um, as, as government. But now we are at that point where we need to change societal norms and behaviors. We need to change the way people, the people on the street, us as the people, our civil society, how we see and perceive queer people, um, people who are part of this community. That's the only way that we can change the power structures. By that I mean police officers need to be trained as to how to engage with queer community when they come to say, I have been attacked or this has happened to me, mm. and not perpetuate more violence by saying, oh, but you're a lesbian, so you 
deserve that mm. because that is what happens. Um, medical staff need to know how to work with us mm. and our sexual identities and our gender identities. There's a lot of unlearning that needs to happen. Um, someone, someone called Pamela Adi from Nigeria, she calls it changing hearts and minds. Mm. And we're going to have to change hearts and minds and that means change societal norms, um, how we view people and the biases and the prejudices that we hold mm. towards the community. That is really unsubstantiated. Mm. Um, so yeah, we can change laws but hand in hand with that needs to go the changing of societal norms. And that's how we're going to get through equity in this country. Oh, Kim, I could chat to you all morning <laughs> about this. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for this incredibly important book. Thank and may you, you continue uh, uh, to thrive. And we're looking forward to the next series. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> that's uh, Kim Van Vogel, a human rights defender and writer. And she's been speaking to us about a book uh, she uh, compiled with Kelly Eve Guapman titled They Called Me Queer. Well, if you belong to a book club or your lone reader you can also join us for our sunday morning book feature to talk about some of the uh, books that you're currently reading or have read send us a detailed description of your book club on our email address or simply take a picture and uh, attach a brief caption using our social media platforms at morning live sabc and morning live sabc our twitter pages and facebook pages respectively otherwise drop us a mail morning live at sabc.co.za time for a quick break